All praises to the Most High. It's your boy G Rock coming back with this beautiful video about unclean foods, birthdays, and also Christmas as well. All right. Um, I will be reading from the chapter, excuse me, the Leviticus chapter 11. And the Lord spoke unto Moses and to Aaron, saying unto them, Speak unto the children of Israel, saying that these are the beasts which ye shall eat among all the beasts that are on the earth. Whatever, whatsoever parteth the hoof and is cloven footed and cheweth the cud among the beasts that ye shall eat. Nevertheless, these shall ye not eat of them that chew the cud or of them that divide the, the hoof as the camel because he cheweth the cud but divideth not the hoof. He is unclean unto you. And the coney, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the hoof, he is unclean unto you. And the hare, because he cheweth the cud, but divided not the, ho the hoof, he is unclean to unto you. And the swine, through the he divided the hoof, and he be cloven footed, yet he cheweth not the cud, he is unclean to you. Of their flesh, shall ye not eat, and their carcass shall ye not touch. They are unclean to you. Can't even touch their carcasses, pigs. These ye shall eat of all that are in the waters, whatsoever hath fins and scales in the waters, in the seas, and in the rivers, them shall ye eat. And all that that have not fins and scales in the seas, and in the, in the rivers, of all that move in the waters, and any living thing which is in the waters, they shall be an abomination unto you. Okay, I have to read that again. And that's verse 10. We'll go to verse 11. They shall be even an abomination unto you. Ye shall not eat of their flesh, but ye shall have their carcasses, but ye shall have their carcasses in abomination. Whatsoever hath no fins nor scales in the waters, that yet shall be an abomination unto you. That is uh, verse 12 in the Leviticus. Whatsoever hath no fins, no scales in the water, that shall be an abomination unto you. All right, one of 13. And these are they which ye shall have an abomination among the fowls. They shall not be eaten. They are an abomination. The eagle and the ostrich and the osprey, and the vulture, and the kite after his kind, every raven after his kind, and the owl, and the night hawk, and the cuckoo, and the hawk after his kind, and the little owl, and the cormorant, and the great owl, and the swan, and the pelican, and the gear, and the gyre eagle, and the stork, the heron after her kind, and the lop wing, and the bat. All fowls that creep upon, going upon all four, shall be an abomination unto you. You're not supposed to be eating bats, swine, none of that. All right, let me continue. Verse 21. Yet these may ye eat of every flying thing, creepy thing that goeth upon all fours, which have legs above their feet, above their feet to leap without upon the earth. Even these of them ye may eat, the locust after his kind, and the bald locust after his kind, and the beetle after his kind, and the grasshopper after his kind. But all other flying creepy things which have four feet shall be an abomination unto you. And for these things ye shall be unclean, whosoever touches the carcasses of them shall be unclean until the even. To wrap things up here. If it does not have scales or fins, it is unclean, such as shrimp, etc. It's unclean. And there you have it. Shalom. And all the way through. Something from a few of the comments in my last video, specifically about birthdays. A lot of people may seem to think that birthdays are okay to celebrate because you're just celebrating another year. Let's see where it originated from. Just like every other holiday that's pagan, birthdays are also pagan. Pagans thought that evil spirits lurked on days of major changes like the day you turn a year older. So what they used to do to the birthday person is gather around them in a group, light some candles, and that was supposed to be a form of protection against the evil spirits. 
which is why they would sing happy, cheerful songs to try to scare away the spirits. Now, a few years ago, before I woke up to the truth, I personally loved Christmas. That was one of my favorite holidays. But honestly, where did that originate from? Because it's not his birthday. His birthday wasn't mentioned in the Bible. We only have an idea of the season that he was born in. So if birthdays were so important, then why wasn't his birthday mentioned in the Bible? Because birthdays are pagan. Now, I also get the question a lot, where in the Bible does it say not to celebrate birthdays? If it doesn't say we can't celebrate it, then why can't we celebrate it? Well, here's that verse right here, Jeremiah 20 and 14. Cursed be the day wherein I was born. Let not the day wherein my mother bear me be blessed. You're not supposed to bless the day of your birth. For in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines of the commandments of men. So every year when you're saving up to spend your last dollar on holidays such as Christmas and birthdays, you're following commandments of men because none of that is said to do in the Bible. So for anybody saying, well, the Bible doesn't command not to do it, it literally does. And let me point this out again. But in vain, they do worship me. Vain meaning pointless or useless, which means everything you're doing is useless to him. Now, here's Christ's birthday. For the customs of the people are vain, meaning pointless, useless. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of a workman with an axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and a hammer that it move not. Those verses are talking about Christmas. Just think about those verses next time you're celebrating Christmas, thinking that you're celebrating the Messiah's birthday when he literally just called it vain and pointless. I apologize. I missed the verse in front of it. Thus saith the Lord, learn not the ways of the heathen and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven for the heathen are dismayed at them. So the Bible does say, do not celebrate birthdays and do not celebrate Christmas. Not to mention that he literally calls people that do that heathens. And a heathen is somebody that doesn't belong to him. The nations know who God chose as his people and they hate God for it. That's the why they despise us. They despise us because they despise us because they know that our God did not choose them despite making them. That's like a, that's like, that's like a, a parent having a bunch of kids, but he has that favorite. And the other siblings hate that sibling because he's the favorite. Like Joseph. Like Joseph. Same thing, except there's heathens and us. Remember, remember, we're the youngest. Joseph was the, that's crazy. Joseph was the youngest. And Jacob was, and Jacob, our nation, is the youngest. And his brothers did what? Put him in slavery. What did, what did, our, what did our heathen brothers do to us? Put us in slavery. Damn. Damn, B. Parallel. They're very, very parallel. And then what happened in the end? Joseph did what? He rose in power. Roll. And he told me he's gonna roll over them. And told me he's gonna roll over them. Oh mm. snap! Yeah. Man. Oh praise damn. Yeah. History's parallel too. Joseph's Joseph's life is parallel to Israel's um plight and rulership. Also. And Joseph was in prison. And Joseph was in prison too. Oh. In From Africa to America, that you don't know who you are, but you are the children of of Yahweh, the children of Israel. And I'm telling you, you have to come back to your homeland, here to Zion, to Jerusalem. Because as the Gentiles, we do need you. We need you to come and pray because you are our saviors. You the one that was chosen by Yahweh to live in this land, not the Jewish people, it's you. You were stolen from Africa, they deceived you, they told you that you are slaves, but you actually the children of Israel. This is about to hit home for somebody. When God is about to bless you, he will first reveal your enemies. Huh? When God's about to bless you, you will first reveal your enemies. Get out the way and let God do his work. Your enemies will get what's coming to them. Unclench your fists, shut your mouth, and remove that anger from your heart. Never forget who you are. Most importantly, never forget whose you are. When people come up against you, they are coming up against God. And one thing I know about God is he don't play about his people. Listen to me. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. Pray for your enemies and let them watch God's favor work in your life. God is about to prepare your table in the presence of your enemies. Every nation on earth gonna see. Every knee shall bow. King of kings.